Hello everyone, it's me Clayton. I just finished watching the Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1, starring Tom Cruise, Haley Atwell, Vanessa Kirby, Rebecca Ferguson, Ving Rames, Simon Pegg, and S.A. Morales, and directed by Christopher McQuarrie. Now, the Mission Impossible series has gone through a variety of director's styles, and has had Ethan Hunt and his team go up against many different kinds of enemies. But this is the first film in the series that has the, mission, the Impossible Mission Force go up against an enemy that doesn't have a face, and doesn't have an identity or a past, because their enemy is basically an AI. And in today's world, it's actually quite topical. But let's get to the story, shall we? The story for the first part of this two-part finale for the, for the Impossible Mission Force involves an AI that's gone rogue that can essentially control weapons, can control information, and can basically be an enemy to any nation in the entire world. It can be the powder keg to set off World War III as we know it. So Ethan Hunt, played once again by Tom Cruise, has to work with his team, including Luther and Benji, played by Ving Rhames and Simon Pegg, to find this AI and to destroy it. But in order to get to the AI, they have to find a key that was that is split into two parts. One of the parts is taken by a pickpocket named Grace, played by Holly Haley Atwell, and the, and the team has to work with her in order to find the other half of the key, while also avoiding a man named Gabriel, played by S.A. Morales, who, along with his henchwoman Paris, played by Palm Clemente, is a he's apparently the one responsible for a death that caused Ethan Hunt to become the man that he is today. So not only does Ethan have to find a way to take down an AI that can be anywhere and understand anything, he also has to take out the man who made him who he is today. And for a finale villain, that double threat definitely feels like it's warranted for a, a film of this magnitude. Especially because the film takes place in many exotic locations, from the Middle East to Rome to Paris to... And it definitely feels like a Mission Impossible film f for international audiences, and all those locations do satisfy when it comes to their big action scenes, whether it's a massive car chase in Rome, whether it's a big gunfight in the Middle East, or a train sequence that basically has Tom Cruise pull off one of his gutsiest stunts ever. And given the stunts that he's taken, that's saying a lot. But it's... But all that spectacle is wrapped up in a very topical story that would have seemed ridiculous a few years ago, but nowadays feels like it's more topical than ever before. Especially because AI has evolved to the point where I can see one of, of this type causing this much mayhem for the US government and for the governments of the whole world, in fact. Plus, going back to, to Ethan Hunt's past just enough to understand why this new villain Gabriel is basically his biggest enemy, could make things quite interesting for part two, especially given how deadly he's shown to be in this film, and how S.A. Morales plays him here. And I also really love the stuff they did with Elsa Faust, played by Rebecca Ferguson, and how Haley Atwell basically becomes a new, a new member of the IMF unintentionally. She's a skilled pickpocket, of course, but she still isn't isn't completely in over her head when it comes down to it. She still needs to be helped out by Ethan quite a bit, but given her lack of experience in this in this exact franchise, and given that her character is basically someone who's wanted the finer things in life but didn't expect to have to go into this sort of work to get them, it makes total sense as to why she's like this. When you combine that with great humor, uh, great pacing, and a cliffhanger that really sets up what could be an explosive finale for the series, you can tell the Christopher McQuarrie movies have basically been the best of the whole Mission Impossible franchise. Paying homage to what came before, but never forgetting what made Mission Impossible so great to begin with, by putting his own spin on things. And that's why I'm going to give Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 a 9.5 out of 10. Definitely don't miss this one.